Because these are always cool things to kind of get the season going. Yeah, it is. I mean, um, to, to have, whatever, 1,200 people here, um, and there's like little to no fanfare about it. Like, you don't see it being advertised. Uh, I say this about a lot of the events that our marketing team or our athletic department put on. I just don't think you can do this in many programs in the country. It's one of the many things that make Louisville basketball so special. Have you had a chance to break down film from the scrimmage and see some things that you like? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there, there are some things to like. You know, it's so early on that I think as a coach, all you see are the glaring mistakes. Um, and we pointed those out, and we really tried to correct them in the days since the scrimmage. But I, I think that's what you do throughout the entire preseason is, you know, you watch film, you try to address those things and continue to grow in those areas. And uh, as I said during the uh, luncheon, you know, you really feel a sense of urgency knowing that we have a, a conference game to start the year. How much does it help having like the secret scrimmage and the exhibition just leading into the season? It helps a lot. Um, both both events will help us a whole lot. You know, um, the secret scrimmage, you're playing a power five type program. Athletes are big, style of play is fast. Uh, in Bellarmine, we know we're going to face a disciplined team that's going to move the ball. Uh, it's going to mean a lot to them to try to beat us. Um, and so our players being in front of fans for the very first time against an opponent, uh, especially our freshmen, all that helps in preparing for our first game. Ryan has been with this program for so long and seen so many different styles of play and different coaches and stuff. When you first got here, did you have a talk with him kind of about what you expected from him and to let, like, let him know that he's going to bring stability to this team? Well, I, I had a talk with every player. Um, it wasn't just uh, Ryan-centric, but Ryan's a huge part of our team. Uh, he was voted a captain for a reason. Um, they respect him as a player. They respect his voice. We've seen a lot, like you said. And so when you have 50-year guys in your program, you're really blessed as a coach because it doesn't happen, uh, especially guys that are very talented and earn minutes and they're going to be an influential part of your team. So not only Ryan, but Steve, Dwayne, you know, Fresh, I'm really excited about those guys that are in their final year of college basketball. So you a little bit about Jordan, the captain's scrimmage last game, how he's one of the best players in the conference. What's different about his game this year, you think, compared to last year? Well, I, I think what needs to be different is we, we are not solely reliant on him. Not that we were a year ago, but, um, you know, I think when, when you have the ability to take over a game like he does, you know, sometimes you, you're overzealous, you're overaggressive, and he doesn't need to be. That, that cost him at times last year because you look at his assist turnover ratio. I just want him to be a more efficient player. Uh, I believe he's really tried hard to be that during practice. I thought his shots on Saturday in the scrimmage were, were ones he took off plays that we were executing. He's got to get, continue to get better you know, in all areas, and good players like him want to. Are you ever where you, as a coach, where you want to be before the season begins? And, and looking right now, kind of on, on target to be where you want to be? Time will tell. I think, you know, we'll get two litmus tests here in the next couple of weeks um, with the scrimmage and with Bellarmine. Um, and then you just take inventory from there and, and try to figure out what do we need to do next practice. Uh, but those films for our players will be reality. You know, everything that we've talked about, uh, did we do it against an opponent? Where do we need to get better? Uh, the film will give you reality. It doesn't lie. You made any decision about what a Quinn will play or what sure. It's funny you say that because Quinn obviously, he was not here today. Uh, he's in the hospital um, with appendicitis. And so about two hours ago, I thought he was having surgery. And now antibiotics might allow him not to. And we're going to know in 24 hours whether he's going to have surgery or not. Uh, that's really independent of the red shirt talk because even if he has surgery, you're talking about being out a week. Um, so. I'm going to wait until the last possible second to determine whether we want to redshirt anybody on the team. What kind of mistakes do you see now versus, say, February, March? I don't know about mistakes so much as just uh, understanding roles. Uh, certainly, we, we make mistakes with the basketball, bad shots, turnovers. Um, you know, things that because of the intensity that the defense brings in the real season that doesn't happen in open gym, uh, the ball tends to fly around a lot. So we got to get better in that area, and we know that. I've heard you guys talk up there. Who's the worst team in the Dolphins and Bengals? Well, they play each other, so I don't have to make an opinion. We'll find out in week 15 or 16, second to last game.
Controversial question. NBA in China. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, it's amazing to me that guys can speak openly uh, about everything under the sun um, except what's happening in China. I'll leave it at that. In terms of fresh, do you find um, transitioning him, um, do you tap into things that you did last year um, with TC in terms of you know, just getting him comfortable with your program? Yeah, I think fresh said it all. When he, when he came here, he was uh, just a few weeks off surgery with his knee. And uh, you know, it doesn't allow you to be in the best shape you possibly can be in. He put an awful lot of time in with Coach Kettler and on his own. Uh, he's in great shape. I think he provides stability at the point. I think Darius has played extremely well. I got a tough decision to make because you know Darius, I think, has a higher ceiling, um, but Fresh at the same time, you know, provides some stability that maybe Darius doesn't. They're going to play both. They're both going to play a lot. It just depends on where and when, and uh, you know how effective they are. How important is getting a point guard for this next recruiting class? Given that it's always important. Yeah, recruiting is always important. So uh, we don't worry about the ones that we miss on because it happens every recruiting cycle, and uh, everybody loves to talk about those. But we're just going to continue to figure out you know, ways that we can improve our team for next year. For the I'll first give you the, uh, the forum to make any sort of retort to a Dolphins fan making fun of the Bengals. I'm so low right now with my NFL choice that uh, I'm not going to make fun of anybody. It's all right. So, I've come to realize, I started doing this in the 90s, and at the time there's no social media, there's no internet, the media's limited, so when I do these Q&A, a lot of the questions are new, a lot of the answers are new. You've been at the ACC media days, you've had your media day, people ask you questions all the time, and I know you enjoy it, but I gotta ask you, is there a question in general that coaches hear from the media and just cringe a little bit? No, but uh, I would just say that in 2019, with, with all, um, you know, everybody wants your opinion on something, you know, and I, I sort of joked when we were at ACC Media Day that it was going to be a uh, name, image, likeness conference. You know, you're going to get everybody asking a question about today's hot topic and then getting excited to, you know, roast you over the coals when you didn't have the answer that they wanted. So. Uh, it just amazes me to sort of watch people's reactions nowadays on Twitter, but I don't think there's a particular question that, that I get bothered by, per se. I'm just kidding. I, that's a great observation. How about just a quick takeaway from your first year at Louisville? Well, what stands out to you? This is a great season. I know it made the end the way you guys wanted to, but it was a great year. Uh, I think a few things that stick out to me are, are just the community. Um, you know, I didn't realize how vast uh, you know, Cardinal Nation was uh, and, until I started going to the football games in the beginning and then just seeing the support that our guys had, uh, not just on campus, but uh, around the country. You know, we played at Georgia Tech and uh, there were more Cardinal fans than there were Georgia Tech fans. And that was something that um, I always remember my first year. I also remember uh, certainly our players and the ones that aren't here, um, you know, our fifth-year grad transfers and, and McCoy and Kristen and, and Quan. I thought uh, those guys came here with a, uh, with a hope that they could be a part of, you know, sort of laying the foundation for trying to get through some things. And uh, I always remember those guys. Uh, they may not be the greatest players in, in Cardinal history, but uh, they meant a lot to these guys, certainly to our coaching staff. And that, that, that's some of the things I think about when I think about our first year. With your time at Xavier and even Evansville, you mentioned this a little bit, but what's it like having a football team on campus? Does it impact the, the game? Does it impact recruiting? Does it change things? Well, I guess I'd start by, by saying that, you know, my football experiences have been really bad here lately with the, being a Bengals fan. And so I get to Louisville and, you know, they proceed to lose eight games in a row and, and, and coach gets let go. And I, I thought for a second, man, it's got to be me because every football <laughs> team that I begin to support just like crumbles. Um, so I've gotten to know Scott Satterfield, you know, we've gone to dinner a few times and then I think he invited me a couple weeks ago out to dinner and I said, I'm, I'm done, man. Like, I, you guys are on a roll, like, leave me out of this. I just want to enjoy football. Um, but it's exciting. You know, I think whether it was a Notre Dame game, uh, you know, certainly the Boston College game the other, you know, a couple weeks ago, obviously everybody's looking forward to this Saturday. Uh, 
I, I just think that what Coach is doing is special. Our recruits feel that. When we walk from the from the parking lot at our tailgate to get our tickets, I can't tell you how many fans come up to our guys, uh, come up to the recruits, and, and that's special. You don't find that everywhere. And, um, so it's been a great experience so far. I asked Malik about the second season and, and kind of knowing expectations and how things work. What's been the biggest advantage for you and your staff where not everyone's new? Well, I think anytime that you're, you know, somewhere you want continuity, uh, to have as much experience returning uh, to our team, uh, I think adds a whole lot. And I think from their standpoint, you know, being able to listen to the same assistant coaches, uh, being in the same strength program with the same coach, just the continuity from year one to year two. And as Malik sort of mentioned, uh, it's not just on the basketball court. It's not just terminology or plays or maybe the things that come to mind first, but it's just an overall way of doing things that I think our players, you know, hopefully find great comfort in. And the freshmen are learning, but they also can learn uh, from the upper class. And I've used these, these lines before, and they're not mine. Uh, Tony Dungy calls it regenerative leadership, uh, where your older players uh, are really guys that can pass on how things should be done. And even sometimes not necessarily a coach's terminology or the way we do things, but uh, just maybe a tip here or there on, on either end of the floor. And uh, Our freshmen are benefiting because of it. And that was actually my next question because it fascinates me, the regenerative leadership. Uh, and and it's, it's almost like a big brother program. Like you specifically assigned a player to a player, and I imagine you're seeing benefit from that immediately. I don't necessarily assign a player to a player. I think that uh, sort of evolves. Guys develop friendships, uh, kinships. You know, maybe it's a personality trait. Uh, maybe it's a guy at the same position, and now you see something that he does on the basketball floor, uh, or vice versa. You're a junior, you're a senior, you see something that the freshman did, and maybe you did a year ago and you figured it out with the coach's help. Uh, and, and being able to have that type of leadership and that type of older voice on the court matters. And uh, we have that. It's not perfect by any means, and I don't expect it to be. Uh, but our hearts are in the right place, and we're going to get better because of that. What have you seen from the team so far? I know practice is limited, but you've been with the guys for a while with individuals on that, but what have you seen? Seen a lot of mistakes uh, <laughs> that we have to correct. Uh, I have a greater sense of urgency knowing that we play uh, Miami, Florida, an ACC opponent in the first game of the year, which is uh, extremely strange, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I would tell you that I also see a great coachability with our guys. You know, I try to be very... And I hope they understand this and appreciate it. I think a lot of times it, it becomes they feel like they're getting criticized. But my job is to be uh, a truth teller and to give them the absolute truth as I see it. Now, they may not see it that way, but it, it's as I see it. And um, they just have to trust that I'm not trying to belittle them or do anything other than make them a better player. And the sooner a guy realizes that and sort of gets out of his own feelings and not feeling sorry for himself and develop a thick skin and a next play mentality, the better player he'll become. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. The world could use more truth tellers, no question about it. Is there a single ACC coach that says about that ACC opener, oh, that's a great way to open the season, I love it. Or is it pretty much a consensus like, you know, smile and wave and yeah, that's the game we're going to play. It, seems, it, it does seem odd, but I just wonder if anybody embraced it. It is odd. Um, I don't care what any other coaches in our league, you know, really think about it. I mean, they're all they're all excellent coaches. They wouldn't be where they are, but uh, I, I take very little stock in their opinion of what what they think, uh, and it, it's probably reciprocated. So that's uh, no problem, you know. But it, it's just a little odd, and I want our players to understand. Like nobody in this league is going undefeated. No one's going 20-0. There's too many conference games or too many rivalries or too many great venues and great players and great coaches. Uh, but we do want to get started off on the right foot. And so I do feel a tremendous sense of urgency to make sure our guys are much better than we were a year ago in our, in our home opener against Nickel State. It seems like with the freshman class, you've been able to develop some depth. Does the depth allow you to change how you approach things tactically? Or are you, are you still kind of waiting to see at what level that depth is going to be? Uh, you know, depth to me allows our guys to sustain a level of play uh, for a longer period of time. And, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily change how we play. I think that we have a, a framework for how we want to play. It's our job as coaches to make sure our players understand that 
that manual, so to speak, and believe in it and, and play their, their tails off in it. But it allows us to, to sustain, I think, hard play, whereas when you have eight or nine maybe scholarship players, and I'm not talking just in games but in practice, uh, it's hard to sustain that effort and that energy level that you want each and every day out of your guys so you can be the same team on game night. So uh, I think you've heard the word competitive a lot from all three of our players that were up here, uh, which is great. I'm just a, a big believer in, in competition brings out the best of people uh, and sometimes the worst in people. And that's, that's why we want to, you know, put guys in the crucible to see how they respond. But our practices have been extremely competitive, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You and your wife, Christy, daughters, Haley, Lane, and son, Braden, uh, established the Mack Family Foundation while you're at Xavier. You've carried that here to Louisville, already have made an incredible impact on the community. Maybe just talk a little bit about uh, some of the projects that you put forth and uh, what the future brings and, and how people maybe can get involved in supporting the foundation. Sure. So my wife and I started our, our foundation uh, about three and a half years ago. Uh, it's a kid-centered foundation, meaning that we wanted to give back uh, to kids in the community that we live in. You know, our kids are spoiled. You know, they, they get to run back in the hallways of the Young Center and, uh, you know, meet our players and, and have experiences that other kids, you know, in our same community don't get the opportunity to do. And so our, our foundation is really centered on a few things. Uh, literacy, uh, knowing that the statistics aren't bear, don't bear out very well if you aren't reading at the third grade level uh, by the time you're in third grade. And so, um, you know, we've really tried to open up an underfunded elementary schools because we can't work with junior highs and high schools because of um, compliance. Matt Banker, if you're out there. Um, and so we work with elementary schools to put in Coach Max Corners, which are just sort of themed area, uh, areas in the library with beanbag chairs, a, a mural, just a cool space for the kids. We donate uh, between 800 and 1,000 you know, age-appropriate books, books that we all read, uh, Curious George, The Giving Tree. And so our hope is to open between uh, eight and 10 of those a year uh, here in Louisville. We've already been to King Elementary. Uh, we've been to Crumbs Lane Elementary and opened uh, Coach Matt Corners, and we have one opening up in December. So that's the literacy side. I think the other piece is, you know, we talked about doing the hype video the other day. Uh, I wasn't very hyped. The guys will tell you I kicked them out of practice. So um, they put fake smiles on and went over there and got through the intro video. But to be in the West End, um, you know, kids over there in, in, the, in our community maybe don't have the experiences that some of your all's kids have had being able to go, you yes, asked Dwayne Sutton, like, when was his first memory? Uh, of a Louisville Cardinal game. I don't want a kid to grow up in Louisville and never step foot in the Yum Center. And so we're going to have game experiences with the first five or six games where we bring 20 uh, kids from uh, you know that area along with big brothers and big sisters so they have the experience and be able to talk to them before the game. That's just a few of the things that we're doing. Uh, as far as getting involved, you can go to our website, uh, which is macfamilyfoundation.org. I don't run the website, so please don't send me an email that it needs to be updated and whatnot. It's just the bare bones there. Um, but it does give you a way to donate, whether it's time, whether it's uh, money, uh, to a, what I think is a very worthwhile cause. No question. Thanks for all you do the foundation. And thank you for all you do with the team. We're excited about you. We're excited about the expectations. We're excited about the team. And we're excited about that first exhibition against Bellarmine. We appreciate I'm your time, I'm excited, too. Go Cards. Thanks. Chris Mack, ladies and gentlemen.